welcome to Jay Coletti's Racket Reviews. My name is Jay Coletti and I will be your hostess. Here on Racket Reviews, we're dedicated to learning about all things organized crime, and I'm very excited to have another individual study with you today about Joey Ayupa. We're gonna dive right in. He was a Chicago outfit mobster and the most highly recommended individual to be studied today. Now, if you had recommended another mobster to be covered individually, don't be discouraged. I have a running list of mobsters to cover for you, but today we're gonna dig in deep with Joey Ayupa. We have plenty to cover, so let's get right to it. Joseph John Ayupa was born on December 1st, 1907 in Melrose Park, Illinois, and was the eldest son of an immigrant couple, Simone and Rosalia Maria Greco Ayupa, from Lascari, province of Palermo, Sicily. Ayupa dropped out of school in 1918 at 11 years old and began working as a gardener. Later, he would become an amateur welterweight boxer under the name Joey O'Brien. This is why he has the nicknames of Joey O'Brien and Joey O. When asked why he used a fake name, he is reported to have said, I get better fights with an Irish name. There is some truth to his claim. During this time, Irish fighters got paid more than Italian fighters. Ayupa began his career with the outfit when Al Capone was in charge. Ayupa started as a driver. He was even the driver for Tony Accardo, who would become co-boss with Paul Rica in 1947, then continue his career as boss until his death in 1992. In the early 1930s, Ayupa ran a front known as Taylor & Company. This was allegedly a furniture manufacturing company, but in reality produced illegal slot machines. Ayupa was connected with Depression-era outlaws Alvin Karpis and John Dillinger. There are only four men in the history of the United States to ever receive the title of public enemy number one by the FBI, and Carpus and Dillinger were two of them. Al Capone was declared public enemy number one by the city of Chicago in 1930, and no one else had received this title until 2013 when the Chicago Crime Commission gave Joaquin El Chapo Guzman the title. Ayupa was also implicated by Chicago crime records in 1935 as being a trigger man for the infamous bank robber Claude Maddox, who was the head of the Circus Cafe gang, the only Northside gang aligned with Capone. Ayupa would move on to run Chicago Cicero District, one of the most powerful and lucrative areas in the outfit. He would run several gambling operations, prostitution rings, and clubs. In fact, there were so many clubs and gambling operations in Cicero that the area earned the name The Strip before its more famous successor, the Las Vegas Strip. Ayupa operated several Cicero Avenue clubs, most famously the Frolics, the 411 Club, the Magic Lounge, and the Town Hotel, formerly the Hawthorne Hotel, the outfit's Cicero headquarters under Capone that became infamous when an innocent woman was injured by machine gun fire, ordered to kill Capone as he was eating by his enemy Jaime Weiss in 1926. This hotel was owned by Ayupa until it burned down in 1970, shortly after it was raided by agents searching for illegal taxidermized exotic animals or birds. More on this in a moment. Ayupa also had several real estate holdings under the name Rosemar Realty which he named after his mother, Rosemarie. At one point, he had even owned the Navajo Hills Golf Course just outside of the Chicago suburbs. Under his mother's name, he would purchase several properties and even vehicles. In fact, the only asset he ever had listed under his own name was his home in Oak Brook. In addition to his nickname, Joey O'Brien, he was known as Joey Doves and Morning Doves. In case you were unaware, the Morning Dove, also known as the Turtle Dove, got its name from its mysterious haunting coo. Back to that original assertion, why is it in 1970 that so many law enforcement agents were pressed to find evidence of illegal taxidermy operations by Ayupa? The reason is, is because they almost got him on this before. In 1962, Ayupa went on a hunting trip to Kansas, and when he returned home, he was greeted by federal game agents who had been sent to his home as an extension of Robert F. Kennedy's pressure on the Chicago outfit. These agents found 563 dressed and frozen morning doves in the trunk of his car. According to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, it is illegal to possess more than 24 doves per person outside of hunting season. In August of 1964, Ayupa was sentenced to three months in jail and a $1,000 fine, but this conviction was overturned by the U.S. Court of Appeals. Although never convicted for an illegal taxidermy operation, he is reported to have been nervous that law enforcement agents had bugged his headquarters, the town hotel, and moved his operations elsewhere. In 1971, Joey Ayupa took on the role of acting boss for Tony Accardo, the man for whom he used to drive. Accardo and Ayupa shared more than just a vehicle, however. Both men saw the potential in and helped grow the outfit's influence in Las Vegas. He was over Las Vegas when Tony Spilatro, the notorious outfit enforcer turned Las Vegas envoy, was making a mess of things with his frequent high-profile crimes an open affair with boyhood friend and major Las Vegas sports better and casino mogul Frank Rosenthal's wife, a former Tropicana showgirl. 
Due to all of this negative attention from Spilatro, Ayupa ordered for him to be knocked down. Although he had been acting boss for Ricardo since 1971, it wouldn't be until a decade later in 1981 that he would be identified by police as the outfit's top man, five years before his conviction. In 1986, Ayupa was a day late and a dollar short when he decided to semi-retire. Ricardo had lessened his role as well alongside Ayupa that same year. David Helfrey, the head of the Justice Department's organized crime strike force, described Ayupa as the man, the boss, the leader. Another former Accardo driver, Jackie Cherone, would take on much of the outfit's day to day. On March 27, 1986, however, Ayupa would be convicted of skimming. Skimming refers to the illegal practice of taking profits before taxes are paid. Ayupa and 13 others, including Jackie Cherone and Angelo the Hook La Pietra, would be convicted of skimming $2 million from casinos owned by Argent Corp. Argent Corp is the front company that had put Rosenthal in power and was owned by San Diego real estate investor Alan Glick. Stardust was sold in 1969 to the Los Angeles company Parvin Dorman Corporation, which five years later would sell the casino to Argent. In addition to Stardust, Argent controlled the Hacienda and the Fremont. For pop culture clarification, in the 1995 Martin Scorsese film Casino, Rimo Gatti, played by Pasquale Cajano, was based on Joey Ayupa, and Robert De Niro's character, Sam Rothstein, was based on Frank Rosenthal. Ayupa, who had been smiling and waving at friends and relatives before the trial, left the courtroom with a less chipper demeanor after he was sentenced to 28 and a half years in prison, fined $80,000, ordered to pay $32,614.73 in court costs, and make restitution of $30,750.50 to the Nevada Gaming Commission. On June 14, 1986, the hit was made on Tony Spilatro and his brother Michael. The bodies of the two brothers would be buried in an Enos, Indiana cornfield just five miles from a property owned by Ayupa. Interestingly, in a 2010 interview, Tony Spilatro's son Vincent claimed that the hit had been primarily placed on his uncle Michael, and that his father was killed to prevent him from seeking revenge. This claim cuts directly against the widely accepted narrative that Tony Spilatro was the main target, and that Michael Spilatro was taken out in order to prevent him from seeking revenge. Joseph Ferriola took on the role of acting boss for the outfit after Ayupa's conviction, followed by Ayupa's former driver, Samuel Carlisi. After serving 10 of his 28 and a half year sentence, Ayupa was released on January 19, 1996, as he was suffering from a multitude of health problems. Even during his 1986 conviction, Ayupa had walked with a cane, had rheumatism, a heart condition, and phlebitis. He also had undergone an operation for throat cancer. Ayupa would die of natural causes just over a year after his release on February 22, 1997, at Elmhurst Memorial Hospital. He was buried at Queen of Heaven Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Racket Reviews talking about Joey Doves Ayupa. I've learned so much about Ayupa's life, and I hope that you found this video educational as well. Joey Ayupa was absolutely critical to the Chicago outfit, specifically the Cicero District, and of course the Las Vegas gaming scene. If you have another mobster that you would like for me to cover, please let me know. Again, I love hearing from you guys, and if there's a mobster that you feel has not been covered sufficiently, or if there's a mobster that I haven't covered at all that you're just dying to know more about, let me know. I am happy to investigate. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click notifications to get more Mafia content sent directly to your sub box. Ciao.